observe as a pianist not being involved in an orchestra that much. Go to rehearsals and observe the way conductors communicate to players, often more than 30, 40 individuals, of highly skilled individuals, highly independent-minded individuals, do a unifying task. Mm -hmm. I've had a few conducting lessons with you, Luke, in the last few months. Two was on the Haydn, one of the Haydn symphonies. And the last one we had, we worked on how to conduct from the piano, mm. um, from a pianist's perspective. And I find that very interesting. And it's certainly not an easy task um, for the mind and the body. Some advice you've given me as a pianist to create your beat. I often have this habitual thing about stopping suddenly. But obviously that comes across to the whole orchestra where the beat land may be different. So you've talked about this important concept about flow, mm -hmm. about flow, about having as little corners as possible to have the grand gesture, but keeping the integrity of the beats and moving the music. And I think that's a very philosophical way of explaining what conducting is really, not just from the podium, but as a conductor, his or her character, everyday preparation of conducting. Tell us about what you do before going into an orchestra. What are some of the preparation tasks away from the musicians, away from an instrument or even from uh, away from the score or with the score? What are some of the things that you do behind the scenes? Sure. Um, so, I mean, that's really where 70, 75% of the work maybe happens, you yeah. know, is before you get to the orchestra. They're also, I mean, from a basic point of view, of course, you open the score and you see what's there, you know, and you've probably agreed to do this particular piece or you've even, if you're fortunate enough, um, decided that you'll do it, you know, it was mm -hmm. your decision to do it. Um, so you will al already have some kind of familiarity with the piece and the way it fits into the rest of the program. Um, but from a basic point of view, I just open the score, sort of, Flick through it, get the try and get the bigger picture of the piece. Bigger picture. Bigger picture. Start with the bigger picture. What's what's there, and then sort of gradually go back down into smaller parts, and really even going into the micro level, just looking really bar by bar um, through the piece and and building it up in my mind because I want to build an oral, and this is <clears throat> the big part of uh, conductor's job, and which I'm always hammering my students about. Um, you know, building up this mental picture of how you want this piece to sound. Mm -hmm. Because um, it's so important to have that picture when you do finally stand in front of the orchestra. Um, it's not just about waving your hands no. around. It's about having some kind of musical vision, um, which is uh, supporting everything you do. So that And that's when you develop that vision. Yeah. Um, so as well as the score study itself, and um, I should say I try not to listen to recordings uh, as much as it's possible or not until I've really gone f a fair way down the track with a piece and then if if it's an old work if it's Brahms or whatever then I'll go listen mm. to a whole bunch of recordings you know 30 different recordings of the symphony or to have different is. reference yeah exactly yeah. um to and then I you know I'll hear some things in common which I was thinking of doing and then I can think oh yeah that sounds great I'm really yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the right track there or you might hear something completely different and think oh my god that's terrible <laughs> really not going to do that or or you might hear something really different and think oh actually I hadn't thought of that that's interesting I mean we're in this time uh we're, we're so privileged to have access to so many of these recordings Absolutely. so much of musical history remarkable yeah yeah, yeah. um on the down, the sort of negative side of that um, is that from a study point of view, it's very easy to just use it as a crutch and sort of learn mm. through listening to recordings. And from a broader perspective, uh, the downside is that most people are uh, music consumers only. Um, if you go back 100 years, um, even just 100 years, you know, if you wanted to hear music, you had to make it yourself or somebody yeah. in the family. So the music, you know, uh, you had much more music making happen, happening in households yes, and we've lost that because it, now you just press the button or not. I was going to say you press a button on your CD player, but you don't even do that <laughs> anymore. <No. laughs> oh, in about 10 years' time, you just think about a piece of music. Yeah, yeah, probably. Alexa will just play. For yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So, yeah, it's it's a luxury, um, but we've lost something as 